Our mad scientist friends at DARPA, they're at it again. Except this time, what they're doing is truly revolutionary. Using the Earth's atmosphere as a global sensor shows promise. Researchers on DARPA's Atmospheric as a Sensor program will share scientific results with the defense and scientific community at a hybrid in-person and virtual workshop April 15th and 17th, 2025 in Daytona Beach, Florida. The goal of the workshop is to build on the program's success and catalyze further research and development for national security. I really want to bring this to you because this program is absolutely revolutionary and could change detection methods forever, absolutely forever. This is a different, this is from DARPA's site as well, but this is about the system itself. And then we're gonna go back to the previous article. Atmosphere as a sensor. The Atmosphere as a Sensor program is a fundamental science program that seeks to understand the propagation of mechanical and electromagnetic energy from the surface of the Earth through the Earth's ionosphere due to transient events such as meteorological sources, geophysical sources, and prompt hazards, etc. For example, the event of this on the surface of the Earth, such as a volcanic eruption, will produce rapidly outward longitudinal mechanical per perturbations on the atmosphere. Those wave components traveling radially away from the center of the Earth will encounter decreasing air density with altitude, thus reducing the amount of energy transferred to the atmosphere. This energy can propagate all the way to the bottom of the ionosphere and has been detailed in the observational literature using various electromagnetic measuring techniques. AtmoSense seeks to understand the evolution of this energy through the troposphere, stratosphere, and mesosphere before it reaches the ionosphere. I wanted to explain that because obviously I'm not the one who can explain most of this, but that is the DARPA summary of the program initially. This is the graphic they show. And this is what's under the graphic. This graphic shows the modeling output of a 3D multi-scale acoustic wave propagation resulting from a kilotons equivalent to that disturbing originating near the ground, such as a form of an earthquake or a volcanic eruption. Also depicted is an instrumentation detection method developed and tested for a source of AtmoSense program that uses ground-based receivers to measure the impact of an explosion generated acoustic waves on global navigation satellite systems. So we're measuring acoustic waves of energy. And when we get back into this article, the reason this is relevant I'll show you in a moment exactly why. This is a tool, I want to find the spot here, that, uh, hold on, right here, benefits for a range of com complex problems. High resolution surface to space simulation of acoustic waves was considered impossible for the program begin, but we accomplished it. My, Michael Neax said. We used to call the ionosphere the ignorosphere, but AtmoSense has made some key interdisciplinary breakthroughs to address what we used to be a massively intractable prog problem. We can now model six orders of magnitude in 3D what happens to an energy emitting from a small meter scale disturbance as it expands up into the atmosphere to the propagate over thousands of kilometers and potentially around the world. Okay, so they can now measure things on a meter's scale. This is the kind of thing that, this is where it becomes revolutionary. Using acoustic wave technology, following one of the New Mexico test rain detonations in 2024, a performer noticed a something unusual in their analysis of sensor data. As the team was looking at the data, they saw a huge drop in what's called the total electron content that puzzled them, Niak said. Imagine that you have water going through a hose. That's a flow of electrons. 
And if you put your fist in front of the hose, you're going to notice a significant drop in water volume coming from the hose. In preparing to analyze their field data, the team noticed a similar, similar sizable dip in the electron content compared to the background electrons reading at the specific location in the atmosphere. As they did more forensics, they correlated the disturbance to SpaceX Falcon 9 reentry that happened the same day as the detonation test. Their sensor data had unexpectedly captured the SpaceX reentry into the atmosphere, resulting in a specific drop in electron content. They s decided to pull other SpaceX reentry data across dozens of launches to see if they could spot a similar electron drop, Niak said. The phenomenon is highly repeatable. We discovered an unplanned new technique for identifying objects entering Earth's identifying objects for entering Earth's atmosphere. The Embry Riddle University team by Jonathan Snively and Matt Zettergren, in collaboration with Pavel Inchin of CompuPool Computational Physics Incorporated, have submitted their novel results for peer-reviewed study. Atmosense demonstrated that wave propagation models were detect, able to detect not only ground-based events, but also air and space events of interest to national security. A.K.A. They are able to use electrons and the difference in electrons in the electromagnetic waves emanating from the earth to detect objects. Now this says it's seismic and these are results come from a detonation of a one ton and a ten ton explosive so they can measure the acoustic difference in the air and measure things like that. It's only a matter of time till they find a different way of measuring an acoustic signature. How about seismic? There's almost always some kind of seismic rhythm vibration going on in the earth. How about from the ocean? I mean, think of so many different ways you're going to get an acoustic movement to vibration. The movement of electrons. And if you can find a way to measure that, combined with AI and supercomputing, there's not a reason why you can't use that data as a method of tracking. A method of tracking anything. You don't have to identify it with your radar because you've identified it using this method. And some things that you can't see with radar, you can say, oh, we identified it with this method. And I, I chose this video specifically because you see the air flowing over it. You can see the movement of the air. You can see the compression of the air. It's probably one of the best visual examples I can give you of what the AI would be seeing when it comes to an electron. You'd, it would be seeing the movement, the compression of it. To an AI... These waves, after they have been emit, bouncing off of an object, emitted from the Earth in one form or another, or emitted from an emitter, a seismic emitter, an acoustic emitter. And next thing you know, what was invisible is quite visible. I wanted to bring this to your attention. I'm not going to pretend that I know squat about the technology. I also am going to say, I think this might be the last time we hear about this technology. And from my point of view, I think that might be a good thing. If this is as breakthrough as I think it might be, because if you can detect a Falcon 9 spacecraft re-entering over Florida from New Mexico based on the compression of electrons, the movement of electrons thousands of miles away. I think, uh, I think we have a new form 
of detection. One that we should probably hold close to the chest. If we can use the entire Earth's atmosphere as a sensor, boy, that gives you a heads up. It also might get you detected if you uh, allow this to fall into someone's hands. So that uh, symposium, that scientific community symposium in Daytona Beach, maybe that needs to go a little more classified. This technology has a lot of potential. A lot of potential. Well, I hope you liked the video. If you did, like it, share it with a friend, let them know, hey, Apparently the United States is finding a way to use the entire Earth as a giant sensor device, a radar if you will. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.